for this problem, we start off with the potential of the harmonic oscillator, and then we can define the term omega to be equal to the square root of k over m. And then from chapter 2, we know that for such a potential, the allowed energy levels is given by this formula. So 1 half plus n h bar, h bar times omega. So these are the allowed energy levels for this potential. And in part a of this problem, we have a similar potential. But now we also introduce a perturbation term. So this is the perturbation term. So this is the h prime term. So this term represents the perturbation. And epsilon is supposed to be a very small number. So this represents a slight perturbation to the original, uh, original potential. And now we want to find the allowed energy levels for this scenario. And then we can easily do this by combining the two terms together. We get 1 plus epsilon kx squared. And so you can see that this is also a harmonic oscillator. The only difference is that the spring constant is different. So instead of k, we have 1 plus epsilon times k. And so that means the corresponding omega, let's say for this case it's called omega prime, is now equal to 1 plus epsilon k divided by m, which is just equal to omega times the square root of 1 plus epsilon. And so now if you want to find the allowed energy levels for this potential, we can actually just use this formula directly. But instead of omega, we substitute in omega prime. So the allowed energy levels is now equal to 1 half plus n h bar times omega prime. And then we've just found that omega prime is just equal to omega times the square root of 1 plus epsilon. So this is just equal to omega times 1 plus epsilon to the power of 1 half. And then we would also like to express this answer as a power series of epsilon. And since we have a 1 plus epsilon to the power of 1 half, we can apply the generalized binomial theorem to obtain a power series of epsilon. So we have 1 plus epsilon over 2 minus epsilon squared over 8. So if you don't remember the power series for uh, this term, uh, you can look up the generalized binomial theorem. It's easy to find. You can just substitute in epsilon for the formula, and this is what you'll get. And then you also have some higher order terms that go on to infinity, but they just get progressively smaller and smaller since epsilon is a very small number. So the higher order terms become very, very small. So we're just going to limit ourselves to the uh, up to the second order term. And so this is what we get for part A. This is how you can express the allowed energy levels as a power series up to the second order term. Now moving on to part B, we would like to obtain the first order corrections to the allowed energy levels for this perturbation term. And in order to do that, we just apply this formula. So the nth stationary state. So all we have to do is to evaluate this expression. So we have an integral from negative to positive infinity. And then we have the conjugate of the nth stationary state. And then we substitute in the perturbation term, which is just 1 half epsilon k x squared. And then multiplied by the nth stationary state, dx. And you can see I can pull out the epsilon term, which leaves us with this integral. And you can see that this integral is nothing more than the expected value of the potential. And then we've actually found in chapter 2, we've actually solved this problem, the uh, expected value of the potential for the nth stationary state uh, for the uh, harmonic oscillator is nothing more than one half of the allowed energy levels. And substituting in the formula for the allowed energy levels, this is just one half plus n h bar omega. And so there we have it. This is the first order correction to the allowed energy levels. And you can see that this answer is actually a pretty good answer because this corresponds to the first order term in our exact solution. So if you isolate this first order term, if you pull out this epsilon over 2, you see we get epsilon over 2 times 1 half plus n h bar omega. And you can see that this is precisely what we obtained using uh, perturbation theory. And so you can see that perturbation theory actually yields pretty good results.